So someone asked me a question about meme coins. Why is it that the belief that a meme coin is going to moon, uh, that it's going to take off, that it's going to increase in value, why is that wrong when it's not any different than the belief that the dollar bill is acceptable or that lira are acceptable or that reals or bitcoin or any any other currently accepted uh, coin or monetary unit why is that a problem so one of the answers to that which is usually brought up is the issue of political authority and that there is not enough uh, rawaj there's not enough circulation of a particular coin in order for it to have true acceptance now obviously you have two people on different sides of the fence here those who look at the universality of uh, decentralized exchange decentralized uh, ledgers and they say hey it's as long as it's decentralized and as long as it's egalitarian in the way that people access it then uh, there's no problem and those are the people or the scholars at least that permit bitcoin and other things on the other side you have those who say no none of this stuff is allowed because there's no political economy there's no real economy there's no political authority that is uh, uh, validating for us the fact that these coins are universal so obviously for those people meme coins out the window um, but for those who accept cryptocurrencies as well as fiat currencies and representative currencies how do you deal with this issue of meme coins because it's easy to say well one has circulation and one doesn't oh well uh, just because mine doesn't have circulation doesn't mean it's not going to become like yours one day so What's the difference here? What's the difference between the belief that my coin's better than yours and the belief that my coin actually functions like money? Well, first of all, what is money? It's, an, it's a standard unit of economic value. It has a, it is a medium of exchange. It has a, you know, it's a unit for accounting and all of that good stuff that we read about in economics. But how do we determine what real economic value is? Perhaps we can't because it is somewhat subjective on the individual scale. But on the broader scale, it's actually quite objective. So it's subjective on the individual scale, if I messed up there. It's subjective on the individual scale, but quite objective on the broader scale. What do I mean by that? In order for a value to be accepted by a number of people, it has to be standard. It has to be universal. universal uh, and it has to be verifiable. If something is not standard, verifiable, and universal or, you know, uh, uh, extremely broad, then we really can't call it a value. We really can't assign to it, uh, we, uh, you know, to be a true uh, immutable value. So let's say, for example, I purchased a movie ticket and I wanted to go and see Dune, for example. Um, now that movie ticket is verifiable. It is not universal because I cannot use it in every movie theater and I can't even use it in every, uh, in every individual, you know, theater inside of the, the movie complex, but it is standard and it is verifiable, but it's not universal. And after the movie time ends, it's also not worth anything after that it's just sentimental value wow look at my ticket stub that i never used or that i used for going to see dune so how then do we get to the point where 
value is universal? Well, it's either going to be accepted amongst a specific group of people or accepted for exchange with other than them. And this is where I think a lot of the crux lies. Yes, it holds value for exchange amongst a specific populace or population of people, what we would call a weak currency. And it may be accepted for exchange by people outside of that, or you'll have people buying into it. However, that doesn't answer the question about why my meme coin value is any different than my fiat value. Well, let's just say that I can determine that when I look at it at a broad, on a broad scale. I can take my dollar bill and use it to discharge debts and financial obligations nearly anywhere in the world, not just in the United States, in the world. I can take a ruble and discharge debts and financial obligations in countries that accept Russia's currency, and I can exchange it for the local currency where I am. But if I could only do one and not do the other, then there's really no value to it. That value becomes somewhat limited. And when that value is limited only to people who are insisting on it holding value, it becomes less of true value either broad, generally broad value or universal value, and simply sentimental value. So for all of the claims of a decentralized economy, meme coins sure as hell do look like a centralized monetary system wherein the value is not universal and it's only held to be amongst others. Let me give you an example. What value allows us to do is it allows us to actually break free of centralized authority for what is valuable and what is uh, possible to exchange. And I'm not talking about here central banks and the like. In order for money to be universal, money has to be the, the solvent that can dissolve all financial obligations in some in one way or another either directly or indirectly directly by spending on it or indirectly by exchanging it for something of value which shows that the other party actually values that and then uh, using it to discharge those debts or financial obligations so money not only and value economic value not only allow us to function in that way but they show us that there is no immutable social hierarchy that cannot be broken down. So meme coins, when you look at them in reality, they actually have the exact opposite of this. They have an extremely centralized economy and they have an extremely limited and many times uh, manipulated hierarchy, social hierarchy. Social hierarchy from the area of development and what goes into that. And social hierarchy from the shills to the devs to the early adopters. Uh, and what I mean by that is greater than just the issue of there being a backdoor in the code or there being a possibility for a rug pull. What I mean by that is that there is a social hierarchy that is not universal in allowing that value to become universal. If you get what, okay, let me back up for a moment. 
when I have to shill a coin, it's because I'm trying to convince other people of its value. I'm trying to convince other people of its value because I don't want to lose the value that I place into it as an early adopter. Interestingly enough, the symbiosis of adoption and shilling started with the creation of the coin. The creation of the coin falls into this, you know, adopt shill loop when the adoption was not clear uh, from the outset. So your belief that a meme coin has value is only a sentimental value because the information that you would need in order for it to be a universal, standard, verifiable unit of accounting and measure and storage of value has been obfuscated. It's been hidden by the promises of a roadmap and the promises of development and the shoddy paperwork that goes into that. And in reality, this is many times uh, an ethical question as much as it is a political, economic, monetary policy question. It is an ethical question at its core. What is fair? What is universal? What functions to transfer that fairness uh, universally amongst a group of people? And anytime you've got these types of staking kickbacks, auto staking, you've got unclear policies, uh, then you don't have that universality and you, and, you're, and you don't have that fairness by extension. So let's think of it like this. You, got, you have a grandma and your grandma has uh, these giant you know, diamond earrings and a diamond ring and a diamond necklace. And your grandma says, you know, kids, when I die, I'm going to leave all of this value for you. This is this is for you. And so throughout the years, you go and you in the belief that she has this diamond necklace and diamond earrings and, you know, diamond brocade and whatever else it is in the belief that 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 you're going to be left to this uh, in inheritance you spend on her, you take her out, you take care of her, you put all of this money and you encourage your siblings to do the same. But then you find out later after she died and when you take the stuff to the jeweler that she was telling you they diamonds, but she knew they were rhinestones. And they had no value whatsoever. She got all of those years of service and favors and money and whatever else out of you for a claim of something that was very easily verifiable in the beginning. But simply because of your belief, you wanted to believe that you were getting future value, you chose to not test to not verify, and to simply bank on a possibility of future value. So, your belief that a jewel holds value was merely sentimental. And if you continued to keep that jewelry for years on end after your grandmother died, and parade them in front of people and tell them that, my grandmother left me all this, this, you know, diamond jewelry. Isn't it wonderful? I'm super rich. The moment that you want to use that value in a standard, universal, and verifiable exchange with someone else, it would be very clear that those diamonds were not of value. Why? Because the meaning that they represent, the ability to use them economically is non-existent. So nobody come and say, well, diamonds, they have value. Like diamonds have, in reality, have very, lo very low value. Probably one of the most inflated things in the world. 
But I'm using them here as an example that you can believe that something has value and it can be absolutely worthless. And it doesn't matter how much you believe it is. It doesn't change what other people think about it. So your personal belief is subjective. But it's not until you verify it universally or amongst a general population does that belief then broaden to become objective in that somebody says, yes, actually, those are diamonds. And we do accept those for value. Or heck, they are rhinestones. And we do, we do accept those for value. So this is very reminiscent of of one of the the lobbits, one of the kind of legal maxims or legal rules that were placed for the use of representative currencies. So uh, throughout Islamic history, uh, Islamic empires essentially inherited the monetary systems of the people that came before them. So they used gold and silver. And so uh, Sasanian, Byzantine, uh, uh, you know, Abyssinian, wh whatever gold was being used at that time, was generally used for trade. And they didn't have a specific, you know, Islamic coin until the year 70, when the mint was essentially standardized. And most of those coins were just taken in a stamp put on them. Um, however, later on, because of the because of the pressing monetary needs, there was something called flus. This was also a, a term, you know, borrowed from, I believe it was the Greek. And it was a representative currency. And that representative currency was usually made out of like nickel or bronze or some other metal. And one of the maxims for knowing whether or not that had value or not, whether it was considered to be a currency or not, was... As uh, Ibn Abdin al Hanafi uh, mentions, uh, I believe it's, I believe it, he mentions that in uh, in his Hashia, that essentially, when there is broad circulation, then these representative currencies are considered to be. Uh, hard currencies like gold and silver and have value like gold and silver and if not then they're considered to be assets now the issue with meme coins and cryptocurrencies in general is that unless what is it that gets you to circulation what gets you to circulation is going to be one of two things is going to either be an actual roadmap with utility and uh, 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 verifiable, uh, uh, a verifiable plan for creating value and utility, or it's shilling. So if it's shilling, there is, there's enough in our, you know, system of Islamic thought to know that ghaban and najish, tanajush, is is all impermissible to go to the market and to lie about a product, to say it has value, and to inflate that value for the mere purpose of inflating that value is unequivocally haram. And yes, perhaps early adopters of, say, Bitcoin, when they looked at it on an individual scale, it seemed extremely subjective. But after a number of people said, hey, this decentralized ledger stuff with proof of work can actually work and it's safe enough for us to be able to use it for a medium of exchange and a store of value, then it became accepted. But notice there was a verifiable plan about how that uh, was going to happen. There was not a overbearing social hierarchy that controlled everything, the overlords of that. It was decentralized. Nor was there some unverified centralized uh, control over that. And so if you look at the successful value-based cryptos, you can see that they function as fair 
decentralized policies without the people. And the interesting thing is, is that not all currencies are actually uh, unsusceptible to change in the amount of, 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 of issue that they have, meaning that they can be, you know, inflationary, deflationary, but that's coded in and there's a roadmap for that so as to prevent huge spikes in value or devaluation. But where is that for the meme coin genre? It doesn't exist. So your belief that this is going to go to the moon is not verifiable, standardized, or even universal, even in, an, in, in a cerebral, like esoteric sense of just what the hell do I even know about this thing? It's based completely on emotion and sentiment that is based in greed. And that, my friends, is the difference between your belief that a meme coin is going to moon and the belief that representative and cryptocurrencies actually have value. Uh, these are general thoughts. I've been reading up on the topic and I figured I would just record it and uh, put it out there. So let me hear from you in the comments. It, you know, what you think about this in, uh, you know, economic terms.